10 years ago, I gifted my sister a house. The reason I did it was to help with her financial conditions. She was struggling, but now, 10 years later, I asked for her help. I was sick. I had to stay at her house. Guys, she's charging me rent for the very first day I'm there. Luckily, her husband has some common sense and, well, I think I started a fight between them. I come from an average family. It was just my parents, my older sister Katie, and me. My sister and I had our needs supplied as my parents did not have so many mouths to feed. Katie was a few years older than me. It was nice having an older sister whom I could even look up to. And Katie could make the time you spent with her enjoyable. If uh, she wanted to. The problem, however, was the fact that Katie always did things with the mindset of what she stood to gain. She was greedy. This was something I detest right from the start. If you had an issue or you were not sure about something and met Katie, she could give you the whole pep talk and emotional booster that you needed. She could come up with the creative ideas which, if exploited, could be beneficial. She's the kind of person you would want to run to when you were in serious issue. And you could be sure she has something up her sleeves to help with your solution. Proffering the solution to people's problem is good. But that is not all that's needed in most cases. There are times whereby you need to be the solution to someone's problem rather than just saying it. This is where my sister was found wanting. Kate would always evade conversations that bothered her parting away with the money. It doesn't matter how she enjoyed your company. Once she sensed that the discussion was tilting towards you asking for help, she would just end it or try replacing it with something else. That is Katie for you. Katie graduated from college years before I got in. My parents and I were all glad when she got a job that paid her something good. The pay, it simply was not very much, but at least it could afford her the opportunity to help around the house if she wanted to. I, on the other hand, was glad that I had a sister who was working and would not suffer unnecessary lack in college. Oh boy, I was wrong. So, I got into college at a time when my parents were becoming financially weak to the bearer of the burden. The whole idea that my sister would help me did not play out as I thought. She did not even help out financially in the house. She would always bring up an excuse why it was not convenient for her at the time. It was insensitive of her because every other adult her age who was working would do the right thing. And by doing the right thing, I simply mean that she would go out, rent a house of her own, and not live in her parents' house where she would be eating free food. During my second year in college, I needed to pay the tuition fee and it was a bad time for my parents. I almost ran out of time, but I was lucky when my sister covered the tuition fee. I know you would want to give her some accolades, but don't bother. She gave my parents the money on the condition that they would pay her back within two months. Yeah, you heard me right. My sister loaned our parents money to pay for my tuition. The annoying part of it all was that she constantly reminded my parents that they were indebted to her. Yeah, what a child. During my days in college, I began to get exposed to the crypto world. And I was amazed at the amount of money that somebody could generate. The discovery of cryptocurrency convinced me to become a blockchain engineer. I was already a computer science student and I learned app development, but that was not going to be enough. I knew that I would have to get mentored by a blockchain engineer who was already in the system once I graduated. This was not going to be an easy task financially, and I was not sure my parents would be willing to sponsor it as they were exhausted already. After I graduated, I told my parents the plan to delve into the crypto scene. They didn't understand what it even meant, but they did not discourage me either. They only pointed out to me that there was no money, and the only one who was in a position to help me, <laughs> my sister, was not going to be willing to. I decided to talk to my older sister Katie about it, but it would have been better if I did not. She began throwing tantrums at me. 
She said that I just graduated and would rather than work <laughs> to be independent, I was still looking for somebody who I would weigh down financially. Katie's reply broke my spirit, and by that I mean that I was demoralized. I didn't push the issue further. My parents suggested that I got a job and save the money I needed to sponsor myself. It was the only viable option, and the situation was tricky as I knew I could get a nice paying job with my qualifications. But it would not afford me time and the pay could get to my head and make me relaxed about pursuing the whole blockchain study. I decided it was best I got a job at a diner, where I would not be in any comfort zone. It was during this period that Katie brought a man home to introduce her fiancé. He worked as a hotel manager, this fiancé, and from the look of things, you could tell he was not begging for bread. He was somewhat comfortable. My parents did not object. They were glad she would soon be leaving the house for good. And besides, we all knew Katie would do what she wanted to do anyways, Katie and her fiancé began putting things in place to have the kind of wedding which Katie had always dreamt of, but we were shocked when she called off the engagement three weeks later. Just like me, my parents were shocked at the cancellation. They inquired to know what happened as my sister's fiancé seemed like a very nice man, but all my sister said was that he was not ready for marriage. My parents were not okay with her reply. They wanted to know why my sister claimed that he was not ready for marriage when he was the one who was footing the whole marriage cost. My sister Katie simply said he needed to put some things in place. She did not say anything beyond that and we were all wondering what could have happened but we soon had a better understanding of the situation three months later when Katie brought home another man. The man whom Katie brought home this time around was super rich. He was a software developer and I was at home the day when he came and we just clicked the moment we began talking. He asked what I was up to and was surprised the moment I noted that I was aspiring to be a blockchain engineer. Well, being a software developer equally gave him an insight into what I wanted to become. He was the only one amongst us who had an understanding of the kind of opportunity I was about to take. He noted that there were a few blockchain engineers and even fewer female blockchain engineers. My sister's fiancé was super impressed with me. He asked if I had began. That was when I told him about the financial challenge and all. I left out the part where his darling fiancé, aka my greedy sister, had refused to sponsor it even though she could. After explaining the challenge that I faced, he immediately promised to sponsor the entire cost of learning. He even went as far as asking me to resign from where I worked, so I could concentrate properly and just learn. He pledged to be giving me a certain amount of money every month to cover my personal needs. My parents and I were all shocked and happy with my sister's fiancé at the same time. I guess he was love-struck and was trying to impress his would-be in-laws. Well, I guess you could say his plan must have been working. I was about to express my gratitude to him when my sister, who was not happy that I would be a partaker of her fiancé's money, immediately interrupted. She told him it's not necessary as I had already saved up most of the money. But he just insisted that helping me out even though I had the money was the least he could do and could appreciate with my family. Although I was happy about the fact that my sister's fiancé had come to my rescue, my parents and I were disappointed in my sister. Because, well, she was trying to stand in the way. She just wanted to be the one who profited from her fiancé. How greedy can one even be? After my sister's fiancé had left, she wanted to pick a fight with me. She claimed that I was vaunting myself in front of her man just to impress him. She went further to accuse me that I had aimed to seduce him. Well, I felt bad. 
I wanted to rat her out to her fiancé, but my parents warned me against it and asked that I just let it pass. I began receiving the money from my sister's fiancé, but it came through my sister. Knowing my sister Kate, I'm sure she was, well, she's taken a percentage of the money which her lover was giving to me. I was thankful for it as I had all the need to pull through. The whole thing, well, however, made the develop a form of resentment towards my sister. You would not blame me though. She had not been beneficial to me in any way. In my life, I could not pinpoint a particular time when my sister had come to my aid financially. Katie finally got married to her fiancé and she began protecting him like he was some sort of treasure. I guess he was her treasure in every single sense of the word. She would not want people coming too close to her husband as she did not want him assisting them. Her husband, on the other hand, was not comfortable with such attitude. He complained to her in private and she did nothing about it and two years down the line after my sister's marriage, my parents were still anticipating having their status elevated to grandparents. They were met with a different turn of events. My sister's husband drove her out of the house and we were shocked when she came with her things and began talking badly about her husband. We didn't believe her entire story as we knew my sister's character to be very ugly. Her husband came down to our house a few days later and he was nothing close to the man who had been worshipping my sister when he came to ask for her hand in marriage a few years ago. He came out of respect for my parents just to inform us that he was done with the marriage as my sister Katie had strained his relationship with other people, all the people in his life because she did not want him helping them out. My sister's husband went ahead to divorce my sister, but he maintained a good relationship with the family regardless. He continued to give me the money for my blockchain tutorials, and it's then I knew my sister was taking a larger chunk of the money from what he had been giving me all along. Well, my parents were not very happy with my sister, and their patience with her absolutely ran out. They began giving her a tough time. She was compelled to contribute to the things in the house and she did this with whatever left of the money which was left from the marriage. I went on to complete my course on becoming a blockchain manager. And well, within a little bit of time, I was an engineer. The money started rolling in. It was then that my parents and sister understood that I was chasing a gold mine the whole time. I went out of my parents' house and rented an apartment of my own. I permanently retired my parents and placed them on a substantial monthly allowance. I initially paid no attention to my sister though, what she wanted to draw a close. But my parents constantly complained about my sister's attitude, and I was left with no other option than to rent a three-bedroom apartment for her. It's been 10 years now and I'm doing well. I found someone whom I want to get married to. Update number one. Hey guys, thanks for showing an interest in my story. Remember I told you that I had seen someone whom I wanted to get married to? Well, his name is Maxwell. I told him to meet with my parents and my parents were pleased and they gave their consent. They had been bothered by my singlehood for a while. My sister Katie, on the other hand, had not remarried till now. Stories that went around were that she was sleeping around with me. That was her business, though, and I informed her about my intended marriage. And she began talking about how marriage was simply overrated. Katie tried dissuading me from getting married and all. Our relationship over these years have not been genuine. Katie remained Katie. I mean, she acted like she cared about me, but it was only a while before she asked me for a financial favor. I most times granted her request. I did not give a listening ear to what she was saying, though. Katie was the last person I wanted to take a piece of advice from. Three days after I had told her about my intended wedding, she called me to ask for money, which, by the way, she claimed that she needed to use for a lucrative business idea that she generated. 
I was preparing for my marriage and so it was not the right time to render assistance like that. Well, I made my sister understand that I could not give her the money she was asking for because of the wedding preparations. Katie had enough sense to not push further as she knew I would not tolerate any form of entitlement to the money which I had worked for. She proposed to help me plan my wedding, but I was wise enough to refuse. I knew that she was simply seeking avenues where she would lay her hands on money. My marriage finally took place and I was not I began suspecting that my husband Maxwell was cheating on me. I tried pushing the thought to the back of my mind as I felt it could be the words that my sister may have spoken to me about men being cheaters. I spoke to my parents about it and they reassured me that though it was possible, it's very unlikely as Maxwell would not be so careless as to start cheating on me less than three months into our wedding. Well, I tried finding comfort in their words, but the attitude I saw was the kind of thing a cheater put up. It got to the point where I could no longer hide my suspicions. I had to just confront my husband, Maxwell, and that was exactly what I did. He apologized for creating a scenario where I had my doubts about his love. He attributed the whole thing to stress, although his reason did not make sense because I'm a blockchain engineer and I'm usually busy too. I just accepted it as I did not want to start raising dust in a marriage that's less than a year. I guess I was just scared about ending up in a broken home like my sister. My husband's claim of love proved untrue yesterday, though, because what I do. I called him red-handed. I saw the WhatsApp chat between him and a previous client that he worked for. He was making passes at her. I was pained. Our marriage was less than 90 days old, and he was already trying to sleep with other women. Maxwell admitted to wooing the lady, but he claimed that he had not gotten intimate. It meant nothing to me. All that mattered to me was that he would have cheated if he had the opportunity to do it. He's been pleading with me since yesterday, but I think I just need space. I'd be going to my sister's place this morning. She had been all right all along. Update number two. My sister finally had the opportunity to gloat. I got to my sister's place where I planned on spending some days to clear my head. I did not inform my husband of my whereabouts as I didn't want him coming after me. The moment I told my sister what happened, she blamed me for not listening to her all along. If I'm to be truthful, I felt somewhat stupid for ignoring her. She used the opportunity to re-emphasize her stand on all men being serial cheaters. She began mounting pressure on me to divorce my husband Maxwell, even though the marriage was less than three years old. I was unsure of what to do. Yeah, I was hurt by my husband's actions, but one thing which I cannot deny is my love for him. I still love him to pieces. I was still contemplating what to do when I received a call from my parents. They demanded that I come to visit. I suspected they somehow heard what happened and wanted to offer their own counseling. I told them that I would come in about a week as I was sick. My claim of being sick was true though. Besides being emotionally wounded, I equally caught a nasty cold while at my sister's place and I just needed some time to recover. I recovered after a week at my sister's place. She was caring during the entire week and I was about to leave for my parents' place where they were expecting me. And that's when I saw the greatest display of greed by my sister, Katie. Katie stopped me right before I could go through her door. I felt she wanted to call my attention to the fact that I may have forgotten something, but that was not the case. She asked me for rent. At first, I did not understand her request as she was not paying any rent. It was the house that I gifted her years ago. I just stood there looking confused. Katie could see the puzzled look on my face and so she wanted to explain to me that I owed her rent for the one week I stayed at her house. She claimed she had enlisted her house under Airbnb 
and would have rented the spare rooms out if not for my presence, of course. She even went on to say that it was her idea of generating the money which she had asked me for a while I was preparing for marriage. I know you're as shocked as disappointed as I am. How could my sister have demanded rent when I came to her house to seek assistance? Paying the money was not an issue for me, but I found it insensitive of my sister to ask me for rent during such a period of time. I stood speechless for a while, just looking at my sister in disgust and hate. The whole caring thing was just a facade. It was just an opportunity for her to siphon money out of me. I gave her $2,000 for the one week that I spent in her house, and I decided it was the last time she'd ever be getting any money from me, even if she was dying. I made my way to my parents' house, and I found my husband Maxwell waiting there. It turned out he was the one who told my parents about his mess-up. I got into the house and he immediately began apologizing. My mother had to take me aside to advise me to forgive him. She warned me that men could get carried away as Maxwell had been. But I should not let my house scatter based on a cheating scandal that almost happened. I reasoned with my parents and had finally forgiven my husband. I don't want to end up like my sister, Katie. Maxwell and I are currently living together, and he's been doing his best to win my trust over. I know it'll take some time, but I'm willing to work it out. Update number three. Guys, I'm four weeks pregnant. There, I said it. This is just six weeks after Maxwell and I have been trying to work things out together. I broke the news to my parents and they were happy. This is a step further than my sister had gone when she married a few years back. While Maxwell and I were doing the necessary things to welcome our first child, my sister, who seems to have no shame, called my husband out of the blue with a request. She told him over the phone that she had this awesome business idea she wanted to explore, but needed some finances. Before Maxwell could even respond, she pleaded with him to keep me out of the whole thing. My sister's request to have my husband keep me in the dark about the fact that she was trying to siphon money out of him under the pretense of him investing in her business idea was something my husband was not willing to do. Her reason was that I might see it as her being insensitive by asking him for money when we're still trying to mend our relationship. Her reasoning was so stupid. But he promised to do so and invited her over to his office where they could talk privately. The moment my husband hung up the phone, he told me everything. I was impressed because his action was a result of trying to win my trust. While my husband spoke about the whole thing, I visibly expressed my anger and displeasure. How could my sister, after bad-mouthing him and painting him to be the devil, ask him for money? What a hypocrite. Besides that, I can vividly remember how she reacted when her ex-husband volunteered to pay for my study, and she even insisted the money goes to me through her. I knew the actual reason why my sister Katie had gone behind my back to talk to Maxwell. It's because she knew I was hurt by the rent she took from me and there's no way I would give her any monetary assistance, or any assistance in any form. After listening to my husband disclose what my sister had said, I went on to reveal to him the very reason why exactly my sister had reached out to him behind my back. Guys, his eyes almost popped out of his head when I told him that my sister had advised me to not get married to him. And, well, divorce him when he almost cheated. He was not happy with my sister after learning that. But his level of disgust rose to new all-time highs. When I told him she had charged me for a rent after I spent a week at her house sick. My husband understood that my sister knew she had offended me by taking money for rent from me. And that's why she went directly to my husband and asked for money. Well, Maxwell and I decided that we were going to play along just to get a little bit of vengeance. He'd already invited her to his office so they could have a confidential talk about business. 
if the business proposal is good. Maxwell, yeah, with me in the background, would exploit the opportunity and it's not going to be in the way my sister expects. I look forward to Katie being served a cold dish of revenge. Update number four. Well, my sister just made a fool out of herself. She came to my husband's office to pitch her business idea. Before going about her business idea, though, she began talking about how she was heartbroken when I informed her that I wanted to get a divorce from him. She claimed she begged me not to leave him over something so unserious. Ladies would often throw themselves at a nice and successful guy even if they knew he was married. And it would be foolish for a lady to leave her husband because another tried getting his attention. Word for word what she said. Unknown to my sister Katie, my husband had the whole conversation recorded. I heard the same conversation and I was not surprised. A greedy person is bound to be manipulative. That's a fact. I'm sure that if she had her way, she would even seduce my husband just to take my spot. Yeah. My husband took the next few seconds before she talked about her business idea to inform her that I was pregnant. You could hear the jealousy in her voice, even though she claimed to be enthusiastic about it. I am sure my successful marriage and pregnancy reminded her about her failure in marriage and the fact that she had no children of her own. It was now time for her to talk about her, quote, awesome business idea, and guys, she nailed it. Her idea was indeed awesome, as she had claimed. She was thinking about establishing a startup financial technology called Fintech. She gave my husband a verbal debrief of how she intended the whole thing to go, and her idea was, well, commendable. My husband knew it was a business idea that, if invested in properly and given the right type of nurturing, would go on to grow into something huge. Where, you know, digital currency was becoming the order of the day. Though my husband knew from the get-go that my sister's idea was spot on, he acted like he needed to further think about it. He even informed my sister that he would need one week to properly look into the matter before making any decisions. Well, my sister left his office elated. She probably felt she had him under her control, and my husband and I decided we were not going to invest in my sister's business. But we would rather create our fintech company using the idea that she generated. Yeah. After exactly one week... My husband asked my sister to come see him at his office. My sister came feeling like she had actually won the lottery. She just expected my husband to tell her the idea was great and that he was going to invest, but he disappointed her. He informed her that though her idea has some potential, he's not yet convinced it would succeed in the market yet and so could not invest a dollar in it. He, however, promised to give her a certain amount of money in a few weeks' time. Just to support her dream, of course. My sister was a bit disappointed that my husband could not invest in her firm, but she was still satisfied with the prospect of getting some money from him in just a few weeks. Update number 5. Final update posted by OP. Six months later. Hey guys. Nah, I didn't forget about you. It's been six months since my husband promised my sister some money to assist her in starting up her firm, and my sister has been so frustrated by both my husband and I. As time passed, she began calling his mobile line several times a day, but her calls were directed to voicemail. After she could not successfully reach him over the phone, Went to see him at his office so she could not come to the house because she did not want to learn about her going behind my back to ask my husband for help. So, of course she went to his office. My husband denied her access to him even at his office. She finally gave up and just let us be. Denying her access was just the beginning of the whole ordeal. It was not the main thing. Unknown to my sister, my husband and I had been making progress with starting up our fintech company. 
With the ideas she had given, and after nearly six months, we were ready to launch and go live. We went live, and I took images of the whole thing and littered it on social media left and right, and my husband did the same thing. I sent these images of our new company to my parents and asked them to upload them on their WhatsApp statuses as a way of helping us create awareness. My parents uploaded the images to their WhatsApp statuses so that people saved in their contact list could view them. And my sister was one of them. Yeah, that was the game plan, to get her to see what uh, had used her awesome idea to create. Our very own fintech company. My sister Katie saw it, and oh boy, she was livid. She could not hide her anger. She came marching down to my house and began making a gigantic scene. She called me and my husband thieves and a liar who took advantage of other people. I acted like I could not relate to what she was saying, and she just went on raining abuse on us. She then focused her attention on my husband as she claimed he had stolen her idea to start up his firm. People who had gathered at our doorstep were curious to know what she meant. And she began saying how she had met my husband behind my back to discuss a business plan. But my husband deceived her and used the idea for himself. My husband admitted that my sister did come and visit him at his office, as his workers could attest. But she only came to beg for some money, not offer any form of business proposal. It was his word against hers. Well, my sister threatened to go to court, but my husband and I knew the case would be thrown out faster than it was written. I warned my sister to desist from making claims against my husband. And me. Otherwise, we would sue her. My sister knew she had lost the fight. There was simply nothing left for her to do. If she was where to go to my parents... They would not give her a listening ear as they cut her off a long time ago. So, she left in anger and I've been feeling satisfied ever since. I would be getting a restraining order against her from the court in just a few days. I don't feel bad about how the whole thing played out. Revenge, it does feel good sometimes. Alright guys, so I found two comments actually that have the polar opposite opinions, but the funny thing is, there were commenters who were taking both sides of this. So, it's a split decision. I'm gonna read them both, and we'll discuss in the comment section which one you agree with more. Comment number one says, Wow, what a roller coaster of updates. First, the cheating husband. Then the greedy sister demanding rent, and now the sister failed business idea. It's clear that the sister is not to be trusted, and it's a good thing the couple did not invest in her fintech firm. It's also satisfying to see them use her idea to create their own successful company. As for the sister's claims of theft, it's clear she's just bitter and trying to cause trouble. Hopefully, the restraining order will keep her at bay. So there's comment number one. Now let's read comment number two and see exactly what they're saying. Well, I understand that the actions of OP's sister may be considered greedy and manipulative, but seeking revenge by using her business idea without compensating her is not a mature or ethical approach. It's important to acknowledge that the sister did come up with the idea, and it's not fair to profit off it without giving her any credit or compensation. Additionally, going public with this on social media and involving family members only adds fuel to the fire and may cause unnecessary drama and tension. It would have been better for OP to have a conversation with her sister and come to a mutually beneficial agreement rather than resorting to revengeful tactics. So guys, there's two interesting thoughts. Let's talk about it down below. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have an amazing day, and Mr. Redito, we'll see you tomorrow.